Alan Bates, the man who has inspired the ITV post office drama, has given evidence at the inquiry into the scandal. Today, hundreds of sub-postmasters were prosecuted due to the faulty Horizon IT software. In his evidence, Mr Bates claimed the organisation was run by thugs in suits and was willing to do anything and everything to hide the failures. He also told the inquiry uh, he first warned the post office of issues with the computer software back in 2000, saying they spent 23 years trying to silence him. We're going to make um, a lesson of my case because a number of other people knew what was going on at that time. And I, I think it was something the post office liked to try and give lessons of how they were in charge. Joining me now is Paul Scully, Conservative MP and former post office minister. Paul, very good evening to you. Welcome to the Independent Republic. Good evening to you. Hi, Mike. Um, it's good to see Mr Bates finally getting his day in court, as it were, um, finally able to say the things that uh, they've been trying to stop him from saying for a very long time. He's actually calling now for a criminal investigation into some of these people. And I think many people in this country would agree with him that that's what is now required, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's that may well be the case. What I want to see is that, uh, you know, all the questioning is done in the inquiry that needs to be done, because you've got Alan that's spoken today, you've got Lord Arbuthnot, who's been an amazing champion for the Postmasters uh, tomorrow. And then you're going to have a number of the chief execs and chairman and uh, PR people from the post office, as well as Jitsu and other people, uh, over the next few weeks. And that will really give us an idea about who knew what, when. And if we need to then do the investigation, which is what we will, in terms of whether there needs to be prosecutions and indeed convictions, then that's the time to go. Yeah. I mean, to call people thugs in suits, I mean, he's not messing around. He's not mincing his words. And I think he probably knows better than everyone uh, how this all went wrong and how long they kept it quiet. Because I don't think there's any doubt now that there was plenty of opportunities to raise this problem before it was raised. And as we know well, oh, Paul, you and I have spoken about this many times. Were it not for that ITV drama, we wouldn't even be here. Well, look, two things. I think I, I would slightly disagree with you in terms of whether or not the very ITV drama, I think what that's helped us do is speed things up. But I think we were already doing a lot of work. I set up the statutory inquiry the, uh, a few years ago. I started the compensation scheme going way too slowly, but we're trying to do what we can. Um, but you know what? Uh, you're absolutely right that we should be in whole position to figure out what we need to now do about holding some of these people properly to account. Because mm. Alan and other people have had the most awful experience. This is the biggest miscarriage of justice in British court right. history. People yeah. have had their lives destroyed based on a state-owned uh, institution. Yes. And I know, Paul, that you've done your part and you've always been very much out there uh, supporting the people who were the victims in this particular ghastly miscarriage of justice. However, you know, there are lots of people who have been deliberately trying to stall things, who have been deliberately trying to mislead people. Fujitsu, as we know, is still embedded pretty well into the government with all sorts of contracts that they're still getting paid very, very well for. Thank you very much indeed. You know, it took a sort of campaign by newspapers and, 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 and others to get... Um, Paula Vendels to actually give up her honour and all of that. And I know that that's all sort of window dressing in a way. But I was hearing a story just the other day that one of the victims who committed suicide uh, many years ago has got a wife who still hasn't received any compensation and is now being told that she probably won't get any anyway since he was actually the sub postmaster. Well, uh, actually, I tell you, I, I'm not sure I know about that story if they. Uh, get in touch with me, I'd honestly follow that up. Okay. Because what these people need, and I've said this right from the beginning, whether it's the victims or the victims' families or whatever, they need life-changing money. Yeah. It was a state-owned institution that wrecked these people's lives. And so we need to make sure we, there is nothing more we can do than just act. We can't talk, we need to act. Yes, exactly right. Because there does come a point in these kinds of stories as well, Paul, where, yes, life-changing money will make a difference, and, and we're talking, in some cases, I think, 700, 750,000, maybe more. But equally, there's an awful lot that these people suffer that can never really be recovered. You know, you can't recover the life of somebody who's dead. You can't recover, you know, 
dozens and dozens of, of situations where people lost their credit rating, lost their houses, lost their families, were ridiculed. I mean, and I'm not blaming you for this. I'm just saying, you know, there's no way really to recompense people for that. You're so, you're so right. Look, and, I, and I mean, when I talk about life changing money, it literally is trying to restore people's lives. But you're so, so right. If these people have had their lives destroyed, mm. you can't talk about this. You can't give them warm words. They don't care about that. These are people that, whether they're government ministers, whether they're post office executives, whether they're other officials or whatever, everybody that's spoken to them, even legal uh, professionals, that everyone that's spoken to them has let them down. Mm. It's about action. It's about um, the life-changing money that can help. It won't bring their life back yeah. to where it was, but it will help. And as far as you understand it at the moment, Paul, where is that kind of um, situation as far as how soon can people expect the money? Because I know there are still several different schemes going. Some people have had money. Some of that was taken by lawyers. There's new schemes being opened up all the time. Some people are still fighting. I mean, can we realistically say that we're making progress at this point? Yeah, we can. And what I, I, I said when I, um, you know, when I've been asked, I would, um, if I had my time again, I would have just brought it all in house. What I'm really pleased now that Kevin Hollenbeck, the current Postal Affairs Minister, has brought it in house and he's effectively, uh, you know, dealing with it within it as a, as a sort of really empathetic minister. Mm. Uh, and he wants to get as much done by August as he can with the people that have had their uh, have a, had a conviction that needs quashing. That will take a little bit longer because of the legislation that need, we need to get through. But what you're seeing now with the uh, statutory inquiry is that we also need to get the answers that we can then make sure that we don't just talk about the mm. fact that this can't happen again. We make sure it can't happen mm. again. And that will happen by the end of the year. So when Williams, the judge, the retired judge that's leading this, will find out everything he needs to know, he will then be able to write up his report uh, beginning of next year, and we will then be able to start. If, if we need prosecutions and what have you, that can then start. But we've got to make it stick so it really can't happen again. Right. And, and your personal involvement has, has been quite um, uh, quite deep into this story, but you're, I think, standing down, aren't you, at the next election? I don't, we don't know when that is. Yeah, I am. Would, I, will, that be, no, will, I that am be, will that affect anything? Now, what I'm saying is, is the fact that if the government does change, does that change the report when it, when it gets published, anything like that? No, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. You've got people like Kevin Jones, you've got other people in the Labour Party that have been really uh, at the heart of campaigning longer than I am. I, I have been, but it's just for me, it's personal because I was the post affairs minister that was able to have the judgment mm. from Lord Justice Fraser, the GLO, the, the, the court case that happened when Alan Bates was leading that at the end of the drama that lots yeah. of people have seen. I was able to take that and grab that. Yeah. And so uh, I was able to humanize, I suppose, this. But people like Kevin Jones and people in the Labour Party have been out to do this. So I think we all know now what the scale of this is. We all know we need to sort it out. So I don't think a change of government will will matter in there. This is just a government rather than a political government's point of view that we just need to get this done and recompense people as best we can. No, sure.